In this video, I want to go over some of my abstract algebra books. I think this is most of them. Um, I'm pretty sure that I have more, but this pile here that you see is a collection of some, or maybe all, of my abstract algebra books. Now, again, I'm pretty sure I have more. Uh, these are just some of them. So in this video, we're going to go through and we're going to look at each and every single one of these books briefly. Okay, let's start with this book here. This is the Galleon book. If you're familiar with my book reviews, uh, you may have noticed I've done a book review on this book already. Uh, the Galleon book is a really good book, and this is a special book to me because my good friend from New Zealand uh, recommended this book. Um, this book has a lot of examples, and I always think of the Galleon book uh, as a book of examples. This is a good choice for beginners. Uh, it's contemporary abstract algebra by Joseph Galleon. Let's keep going because we have quite a few books in this video. This next book was a gift from a former colleague. It's A Concrete Approach to Abstract Algebra by W. W. Sawyer. This is also a beginner book. I wouldn't say it's a fantastic book, um, but if you are looking for an additional resource and you have a few dollars to spare, uh, check it out. It's a pretty decent, decent read. I've maybe spent maybe 30, 45 minutes uh, perusing through this book. I never use it for a course. Um, again, this one was purely a gift. This book was written by a very famous author. This is Galois Theory, written by the one and only Emil Artin. These are a transcription, I think that's the right word, of his notes when he used to teach at the University of Notre Dame. I believe this is one of the first ever um, written books on Galois theories. This next book is extremely high level. In fact, this is it. This is as high level as you can get. So trends in mathematics, advances in ring theory. This is research level mathematics here in ring theory. This is a collection of papers uh, that were presented in 1996, May 1996. And so it's just research level math in ring theory. It is extremely hard to read. It is not for beginners. But if you're interested in getting a glimpse at what some of the research actually is, you can attempt to read this book. Uh, when you read this book, you'll have to probably reference many other books to understand what's going on because, again, this is research level abstract algebra. This next book is the book by Israel Nathan Herstein, Topics in Algebra. This book is ultra famous. Uh, I had a good friend in graduate school who absolutely worshipped this book and with good reason. Um, this is a fantastic book for beginners and for experts alike in abstract algebra. I would consider this an advanced beginner book. Again, the book is Topics in Algebra, written by the great Israel Nathan Herstein. And I've mentioned this before, but if you haven't seen the video, I'll mention it again. Coincidentally, uh, the author of this book uh, went to the same grad school I went to, so that always uh, leaves a special place for me. This, this book is, is great. This next book is extremely good, and I have actually read most of this book and I have referenced it. I have not done a review on this book on YouTube yet. Uh, the book is written by Hiram Pelley and Paul Weichel. It's a first course in abstract algebra. It is a beginner book. Uh, but it is written at an advanced level and it does have some higher level examples. Um, it's extremely good. I have a lot to say about this book. I really like this book and I will be doing a review on this book in the future. Uh, one negative about this book is the function notation, but uh, I'll save that for the review and I, I, could, I could spend 10 minutes <laughs> talking about this book. So again, it's uh, Palais and Weichel, a first course in abstract algebra. This is one of my favorite books in abstract algebra because this is the book that I used to teach myself field theory. So I learned field theory uh, on my own with, with this book. It took a lot of effort. I had to start with the chapter on polynomials. This is a beginner book in abstract algebra and it's a good book, but again, I've mainly used it for field theory and also um, I referenced it for silo theorems group actions as well. The Frelay book is a book that I bought because my first course in abstract algebra teacher said that I should buy it. So I did, and I was very happy with this book. This is a beginner book. It moves at a really quick pace, 
but it's written at a really nice level. This book is a pleasure to read and is probably one of the best abstract algebra books ever written. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a beginner book in abstract algebra. This is an abstract algebra book that kind of has a legacy associated with it. Uh, I have not done a review of this book. Let's look inside it. This book is really old school. I bought this because uh, I read on the internet on some forum years ago that this was considered a classic in the subject. I thought, oh, I should buy this book. So it's algebra. This is volume two. I do not own volume one, not yet. And it's the Van der Waarden book. And in part based on lectures by E. Arten. Yep, that's the guy who wrote the Galois theory book that we just saw. And E. Norther, that's Emmy Norther. That's the same Norther after which Notharian rings are named. So this book uh, is very close to the source. You know, Arten was probably one of the first people ever to write about Galois theory. Emmy Norther created some amazing mathematics. She was an amazing mathematician. So uh, Van der Waarden was very close to these people. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like you're reading uh, some of the masters when you're reading this book. Uh, the negative thing about this book is a lot of the notation uh, is pretty hard. You know, he uses those fancy uh, German letters. There's a lot of a lot of notation that you won't see in a lot of modern books. Uh, so it does take some getting used to. But nevertheless, again, the book is uh, Van der Waarden, and it's considered a classic in the study of abstract algebra. This next book is absolutely amazing. This is the Dummett and Foot book on abstract algebra. This is probably the best graduate reference. Um, I mean, it's such a good reference. This book has pretty much everything. It covers all the topics in a very standard way. So. If you're taking an abstract algebra class, either as a graduate student or an undergraduate student, the Dummett and Foot book will serve you well because it's an excellent reference. I love this book, and my main regret uh, with this book is not getting a newer copy. Uh, the binding is messed up in this, in this copy. Let me show you. Let me open it and so we can see what I mean. See there? It's, it's cracked. And some of the pages, let's see. Yeah, the pages aren't falling out, but... Uh, I do have issues with it. It's not in the best condition. So it's a great book. And if you're learning abstract algebra or if you're looking for a reference book, uh, I highly recommend this one. This is the book that I used when I first studied abstract algebra. It's a pretty good book. It's a very gentle read compared to the other algebra books I have. It's probably the easiest one to read. It's the Saracino book. I've actually read this entire book, every single page. And I have done, I would say, maybe 80% of the problems, uh, maybe even 90%. I've done most of them. The only negative I have to say about this book is that uh, it's not comprehensive enough. You know, you get to the end of the book and there's still a lot more to learn. Nevertheless, it's a really, really good book. And Saracino does a great job explaining. If you're looking to learn abstract algebra, I think this is probably the best beginner book. Again, I might be biased. This is the book that I used. So, yeah, good book. This next book is called Introduction to Abstract Algebra by Roy DeBisch. This book was a gift, again, from a former colleague. I'll be honest, I have only briefly glanced at this book. I've maybe read uh, one, of, one or two of the sections, and I was quite pleased. It's a pretty good book. Um, I wouldn't say it's as good as some of the other books, like the Saracino book or the Beachy and Blair book or the Gallium book or the Ferlet book. It's not quite to that level. Uh, but it's still a decent book, so if you're looking for another source, if you already have all those other books and you just want another book, uh, this one is one to consider. I'll do a review on this book at some point in the future. Okay, so this is a great book to read, but I didn't find it very good as a reference. Uh, perhaps the index uh, is not done as good as it could have been. This is the book called Algebra by Michael Arden. And again, it's an, ex it's an extremely good read uh, if you just want to buy a book to read and learn from, this is a good one. He takes a very linear algebra-centric approach to his mathematics. Uh, this is the son of Emil Artin. So Emil Artin is the guy who wrote the Galois theory book. So Michael is his son. And I believe Michael works at MIT or he used to work at MIT. It's a great book. These are the lectures in abstract algebra by Jacobson. This is the same Jacobson uh, for which the Jacobson, Jacobson Radical is named. I have used these books mainly for ring theory. So I referenced this when I was doing some independent uh, study 
in Netherian rings and ring theory. So uh, these books have some good information on that. So the notation in these books is a little bit hard to read. I don't know if newer editions still have that notation, but otherwise uh, I was really pleased with uh, what I got from these books, which was the ring theory. This is the undergraduate version of Hungerford's book. Uh, this is a beginner book by all means. It reads at a very basic level compared to some of the more advanced books that we've discussed. It's a good book. If you're looking for a supplement uh, to an introductory book, then look no further. This one's really good. Hungerford also has a graduate level book, which I honestly think is better. But again, this is, this is the undergraduate version. Yet another introductory algebra text. This one is called Modern Algebra and Introduction. This one actually has uh, some interesting applications of abstract algebra that you don't really see in any of the other books. Also, uh, it just has certain theorems and things in it that you don't see in the other books. I have spent uh, a decent amount of time uh, working through this book. I think I've made a few videos from this book, uh, or at least I've planned a few videos and I never made them. Um, it's a really good book. I bought this uh, when I first started learning abstract algebra as a supplement and I did find myself reading portions of it and referencing it quite often. Again, it's the Durbin book, and it's Modern Algebra. This next book is called Algebra Through Practice, and this is book two. It's on matrices and vector spaces. This is basically a book of full solutions. There are full solutions to every single problem in this book on matrices and vector spaces. The number one downside of this book is that it is so expensive. Uh, it's not uh, that inexpensive. You can't get it for five dollars. I'm pretty sure I paid less than ten, but it has been several, several years. So it's the book on matrices and vector spaces, algebra through practice, and it has full solutions. If you can get it for a few dollars, you know, totally, totally, you should just totally buy it. I have not been able to find it uh, for only a few dollars uh, since I bought this one. This next book is also algebra through practice, and this is the one on groups. So this has full solutions to problems in group theory. Uh, it's pretty hardcore. It's got a lot of really good problems, and all the proofs are detailed. Again, the number one downside to these books from the Algebra Through Practice series is that they are expensive. You cannot get them for only a few dollars. But otherwise, if you can get them, it's totally worth uh, the money. Okay, so this is a really fun book. It's called The Theory of Rings, and it's by McCoy. And I say that because you can actually buy this book and start reading it. I mean, it starts from the beginning. It's all about rings. I love ring theory, and I'll probably be making some more ring theory videos uh, in the near future. But this is a book just on rings. It's kind of fun, you know, to have a book uh, just on rings. The big downside of this book is that it is a paperback. So, yeah, Theory of Rings, Neil H. McCoy. Pretty cool stuff. So this is a book I actually used for a course. You know, I did some of the exercises from this book because, you know, they were homework problems. This is a graduate level book. Do not let uh, the name <laughs> confuse you. Basic Algebra. I remember um, I took this to to work one day and there was someone in my office. I'm like, oh, Basic Algebra is about like, you know, like they thought it was like, you know, quadratic equations and stuff. No, 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 no. This is This is a hardcore book. It's got a lot of good information in it. And at some point I will uh, do a review uh, on this book. So decent book, Basic Algebra by Anthony Knapp. So this is a ring theory book like the one we saw earlier. However, this one does not start as gentle as the other one. This one is pretty hardcore. Um, this is certainly not a beginner book. So the book is called Ring Theory and it's by Burns. So it's a pretty hardcore book. Let's just briefly, briefly look at the table of contents. So it starts with the basic concepts, then right away it goes on to primitive rings. I mean, you see right away, chapter one, vector spaces, algebra, algebras, are linear mappings. I mean, already in chapter one. I mean, look, the first section, embedding in ring, embed, embedding a ring R in the ring of endomorphisms of an abelian group. That's like the first thing. Uh, and the language may not be something you're used to, so it's certainly not a beginner book. So, yeah, Ring Theory by Burns. This book is called Topics in Ring Theory, and it's written by Barche. This is a graduate level book. This is not a beginner book. So this is a graduate level book on ring theory. So if you're looking to learn more ring theory, 
and you have some abstract algebra knowledge, it's a good choice. This is the table of contents. So you can see some of the topics are a little more advanced uh, than what you would see in a regular abstract algebra course. It's a good book though, and I've read portions of it. Um, again, decent choice if you're looking to learn more about rings. This is an excellent book if you're trying to learn ring theory. Problem Books in Mathematics uh, by T.Y. Lamb. Exercises in Classical Ring Theory. This is actually edited by Paul Halmos. Basically, this book has tons of exercises and they are worked for you. So it's a really, really good way to get into ring theory because you can try the proofs on your own and then when you get stuck, you can look at these solutions. Excellent choice for someone looking to jump into some higher level uh, mathematics. This is another Ring Theory book. This is Ring Theory by Robert Gordon. However, he didn't write the book. He just was the editor because this is a collection of papers. So this is research level Ring Theory. So if you're looking to take a look at what that looks like, uh, consider picking up uh, this book. Again, not for beginners. Uh, I actually don't know where I got this book. Uh, I, I don't know why I have it. I have only glanced at it. I have not like gone through and read it, but I thought I would include it in this video. Uh, I really don't know <laughs> where it came from. And I have saved the best for last. If you made it this far, congratulations. This is the Bible of abstract algebra. Maybe not the best, but certainly probably one of the most hardcore abstract algebra books in existence. It's the Lang book. Uh, this book is completely ridiculous. Um, people say you can't learn algebra from the Lang book. That may be true, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I knew abstract algebra before picking up the Lang book, so I thought it was awesome the way he explains things and the way it reads. If you're serious about abstract algebra, this is certainly a book that you should have in your collection. I bought this book brand new. I, I figured, you know what, I'm going to spend the money. I don't remember how much it was. Uh, it might have been 30 or 40 or 50 bucks, but I remember buying it brand new and thinking, oh, you know, I, I want a new copy of Lang. And so I picked up uh, an actual new copy. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you really want to help out, consider becoming a member of the channel. Until next time, take care.